Hello everybody and welcome back to Robert's Reviews. Today we're back at it with the request. This was requested by Chance in the comments below of one of my videos. I don't remember which video. Good for you. Um, but thank you for requesting that. He requested Tron, Tron 2, and Ready Player 1. Tron 2 comes out next week. Ready Player 1 will come out in January. So, without further ado, let's get right into Tron. Tron was released in 1982. It was written and directed by Steven Leisberger. And honestly, when I first heard about what this movie was about, I wasn't quite interested. Um, it's not really a me kind of movie, I thought. Um, I'm not like a tech geek or anything like that. Um, I'm a geek. Don't get me wrong, I'm a geek. I love movies, I love everything. I read books like every day. Look at my stacks and stacks of books. That's just one bookshelf. I have like five downstairs. It's unbelievable. Um, but I'm not like a tech geek. And this felt very techy. Um, and I know a lot about this film. Um, like, digital-wise, I, I love looking into films. Um, like, I know how they did all the special effects and all in this movie, which is quite extraordinary. We will get there, I promise. Please ignore the screaming child downstairs. <sighs> okay, I feel better. Um, I'm living at home, so things can get crazy. There will be background noises. I'm hoping it's not too bad. You might not even be able to hear it. I hear it. It's very annoying. Um, hopefully they figure out what is wrong with the baby. Um, new webcam comes in next week. For those of you who don't know, The Christmas Chronicles 2, I said, comes out on December 25th. I was wrong. It comes out on November 25th. So you have an opportunity to watch it before I review it. The review for that comes out on December 25th. It will end my 12 days of Christmas special. Back to the review. So, I didn't think I was going to really enjoy this video, this movie, very much. Um, I watched the trailer and I was like, eh, you know, whatever. Um, I know all about the special effects, so I know a little bit about the movie already. And I sat down to watch it, and I was like, it's only an hour and a half? Oh my goodness, I'm going to be done with this so fast. Holy crap. And I watched it, and I was upset at the end of the movie. And you want to know why? I want to know why I was upset at the end of the movie. It wasn't long enough for me. I know, that's insane. Normally I'm like, oh, this movie's too long. An hour and a half is a good length for a movie, don't get me wrong. But I love this universe. I love the idea of this movie so much. I didn't think I was going to like it. I love it. I love it. Um, I love the idea of this movie so much. So much. I'm so excited to watch Tron Legacy, just because we get to go back into this universe. I love the idea. For those of you who don't know what the film's about, I'll give you a brief synopsis. Essentially, this guy creates a video game, and some other person steals it from him, and so he gets mad, and he tries, try to, he tries to go get proof, and this he accidentally sucks himself into the video game, and then he has to kill the Master Control Program, which is basically a giant computer virus, um, and he has to kill that in order to get his proof that he created the video game to earn a lot of money. Um, which doesn't really sound very cool, but I promise you, it's really cool. Um... It's a really, really, really cool movie. Um, even from the beginning, I was like, it was like kind of sketched. I was like, eh, I don't really know. And then I got to know Jeff Bridges' character, um, Kevin Flynn, and I just really connected with the character for some reason. I don't really know why. I was like, I really want this character to get what he wants. I couldn't tell you why. I'm assuming it's just because of the writing and and was just really good, and Jeff Bridges' performance was just really good. I honestly did not think I was going to enjoy this movie. I loved this movie. I had so much fun. Don't get me wrong. There are problems with it. But I love it. I love the idea of it. And I love the universe of it. I'm like, I love the Harry Potter series. But I'm not going to give Harry Potter and the Order of the, Order of the Phoenix a good review. Are you kidding me? Which, like down below and, and comment down below if you want me to do a Harry Potter series. Um, maybe I'll do that in July. Because his birthday's in July. Maybe I'll do uh, just a whole week. Because there's eight movies. So it'll be a whole week. It'll be Friday to Friday. Um, of all Harry Potter movies. I would be okay with that. I love them. I used to grow up with them. So if you want to, if you want me to do that, comment down below in the doobly doo. Um, ow, oh my god, that felt so good. Whew, okay. Um, let's briefly talk about the acting. Then I'll, I'll, I'll mention the special effects and I'll talk about what's wrong with the movie and then we will give a rating and we'll be good to go. Cool, cool. First of all, Jeff Bridges. 
um, who plays Kevin Flint. What a phenomenal job. I, for the first, like, ten minutes of the movie, was like, I know this guy from somewhere. I could not tell you where he was from. I paused the movie, I Googled it real quick, and I was like, I recognize the voice. Because from Iron Man, he was the Iron Monger. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. I understand now. Um, that being said, he's really good in this movie, in Tron. And, like, he was good in Iron Man. Don't get me wrong, he was very good. Uh, very convincing <laughs> in Iron Man. But don't get me wrong, he's phenomenal in this movie, too. And I was really impressed. Um, he just made it, he was such a fun-loving character, and, like, you really bonded with him, and you really just wanted him to be successful in anything that he wanted to do, so good for you on that, um, um, Jeff Bridges, really, honestly, phenomenal job in this movie. Bruce, um, Boxliner, um, as Alan or Tron. Uh, I don't really know why this movie is called Tron, to be totally honest with you, um, because this movie isn't really about Tron, particularly. More so than it's about Flynn and his, you know, goal to get back his video game. But Tron was an interesting character. I didn't actually particularly care about Tron. Um, but basically, Tron was just built to, to succeed in killing the Master Control Program and making sure that it was dead so that they can live peacefully in their world of programs. Um, and Tron was okay. I didn't, like, love the character. Like, I wasn't, like, super crazy about Tron. But he's a cool enough character. I enjoyed it. I didn't hate it. I had a good time, uh, watching Tron. Uh, but my main focus, honestly, was on Flynn. Which is a little bit of a negative. Simply because of the fact that it's called Tron. And it didn't, um, it really didn't make much sense to me why it was called Tron. When it really isn't even the main character. Uh, I don't, again, I don't know what I would have called it. But I'm sure they could have figured something out. I mean, I'm not a creative genius, so that's not my job to come up with movie titles. David Warner as Ed Dillinger, Sark, and Master Control Program. Plays everybody. He basically is all the bad guys. Dillinger is the guy that steals the video game. Sark is being controlled by Master Control Program to basically make sure that Master Control Program is strong. Um, first of all, Ed Dillinger is fine. We don't need to see a lot of him in real life. Sark is really fun. I actually enjoyed watching Sark because you can see that he doesn't really want to be controlled by Master Control Program, but you know that if he doesn't follow Master Control Program, that he'll just kill him. So I like how the, he brought that to the character because he didn't need to add that to the character. He could have just been a bad guy that follows him, but no, he's like, I'm a good guy, but I'm being controlled by somebody that I really don't care for, but I'm not going to do anything wrong because I don't want to die, which good for you for adding that to the character. He really didn't have to. And Master Control Program is fine. It's 100% CGI, um, which I'll get to in a second. Um, and, like, it was really cool. I really enjoyed watching it. it. They did a good job of making sure that his voice was there without necessarily it being uh, the visual. Because the visual is not great. It was 1982, so what are you going to do? Um, we'll get there. Um, but the voice was really cool to have in the background when he was talking, particularly to Ed Dillinger. So, good for you. Cindy Morgan as Laura or Yori. Um, fine. This is a pretty big negative for me, honestly. Uh, is that she's, like, got this weird love triangle between the two other guys. I don't really understand why they had to do that. They could have just taken the love connections out. And honestly been totally fine with just making it a one, hundred and, uh, one hour and thirty minute long movie about the world of Tron. I'm okay with that. We didn't need a love story. And it almost was a love story, but it was it's an unresolved love story and honestly almost an unresolved movie. Um so now we're gonna move on to talking about the end of the movie. Yori was fine, uh Cindy Morgan was fine. I didn't have any problems with her performance, but we didn't see her very often almost at all. Um I just figured I mentioned it because she was the love interest, I guess. It was kinda dumb. The end of the movie I didn't like uh, I didn't like almost at all. I almost would have liked it if we got to see a little bit more of Flynn's uh, arcade room and like him back to normal and like maybe it's a better arcade room because he got more money because he's now the boss i would have liked that a little bit um a lot of it's kind of under unresolved we don't get to see what happens to tron we don't get to see what happens to flynn we don't get to see what happens to basically anyone we just know that flynn becomes the boss of the company again um which is a fine one but i feel like we could have added a five minute epilogue pretty much just just making sure he's good and you know, checking in with Tron and seeing if there's anything else. Um, it's only a minor negative. Let's talk briefly about the CGI. First of all, 
I'm not going to dock any points for CGI, and here's why. For one, it was made in 1982. And for two, this is one of the first, like, computer-generated movies of all time, uh, which is really weird to think about. It's an old movie. I didn't realize how old it was. Um, it's one of the first ones. I know all about it. I know how it was all made. I'm not going to talk to you about it. If you would like me to talk about it, put it in the comments below, and I can just put a movie, I can put a film up, I can put a video up of me talking about the special effects of the film. But it's really quite ingenious. Walt Disney almost didn't fund this movie because they didn't trust it. They didn't think it was going to work. But uh, Liesberger said, yes, it will. Um, and it did. So good for you. Um, it's not like stellar. And it's not going to be stellar because it's 1982. Um, the computers we're working on had such little memory. It only had like 300 megabytes of memory on the entire machine. So, yeah, you know, it's not going to be super easy. And they did it. And it worked. Um, so good for you. Uh, it's always... A big part about film is that it doesn't have to be a good, phenomenal film, as long as the story is there, you know? It doesn't have to have super special effects to be a good movie. However, there are some parts of the movie that I don't believe needed to be special effects. They didn't have to have some of the things happen that made the special effects look kind of weird. Um, and honestly, it would have reduced the budget by quite a bit. If they had just, like, added regular lights instead of just CGI lights. Um, like, in the scenes in the in the computer where it's all a standstill, which most of it's a standstill, um, they didn't have to have it look super techy. They could have just added, like, blue fluorescent lights, and honestly, I would have believed it was a computer world. Um, which is probably what they do for Tron Legacy, but I haven't looked at it yet. That was made in 2010, um, I think. Um, but I will this week, and I'm very excited to watch that. But, uh, again, good CGI, uh, great CGI for 1982, basically uh, set standards for all other CGI movies after that. But uh, they didn't need to use all of it, and honestly, it might have made it a better movie, it might have made more money, and it would have definitely reduced the budget if they just cooled off a little bit on some of the special effects. But that's just my opinion. With all that being said, um, I'm going to give this movie an A-, minus, uh, just because of uh, the few reasons that I, I mentioned below, or before, that was... A little, a little kind of meh, not not super good, not super bad. Um, and that's, this movie is really fun. I enjoy this movie. I enjoy the universe more than the movie. So I'm very excited to watch Tron Legacy. With that, um, make sure you like and follow. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. Thank you. Follow the Facebook uh, join the Facebook group, and I'll, I always add updates on there. I'm going to add more and more interactive stuff on there at some point. Um, there hasn't been a lot of interactivity, just simply because it, it's not something super important. Um, because it'll be ma it'll mainly be for, like, series and stuff, which there hasn't been a lot of. Um, I have my Christmas series coming up. Again, Christmas Chronicles 2 comes out on November 25th. It will be already out by the time this comes out. Uh, so you do have time to watch it before I review it. So you should make sure you do that. Um, with that, that's all I have for you today. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, follow, all that stuff in the doobly-doo below. And keep watching movies, stay educated, and I'll see you guys in the next video.